Hey, what's up there? Um, I thought I'd make a short video to give you a tour of um, how we heat our house during the winter. We heat with wood. Um, we have a wood-fired boiler, which I'm going to explain a little bit about how that works here. But we get all of our heat and our hot water as well um, in the winter time from just burning wood. When we have plenty of wood around in our forests and stuff like that. So it's really nice. Uh, the thing heats our whole house. It uses the the, um, the same infrastructure as the heat pump. We have a regular electric heat pump, um, but basically when it starts to get cold, we turn the heat pump off, turn on the wood boiler, and uh, we simply use the fan in the HVAC system. It pushes uh, air over a heat exchanger, um, and that's what heats the house in the wintertime, so it's all from wood. Um, the way the wood boiler works is there's a, there's a chamber that you fill with wood, you start a fire there, around that chamber is a water jacket, and um, of course the wood fire heats up that water jacket and there are pumps that circulate the hot water uh, underneath the house where it goes into a heat exchanger that is inside the plenum of the HVAC system so the fan can blow air over that and there's another heat exchanger that the water goes through so that the water coming into our hot water heater we have a normal electric hot water heater uh, but the water that goes into it gets heated by the wood stove so we can actually just flip the circuit breaker off on our hot water tank and get the hot water we need from this or if there are periods of time when we're not using a lot of hot water and so there's not a lot circulating uh, we can keep the electrical system on as a backup if we if we need to anyway it's a nice system um, it, this type of boiler is it meets sort of the latest regulations for emissions and that sort of thing so it's clean burning it doesn't produce a lot of smoke once it gets started and gets going um, and yeah, and we get all our heat and hot water from it. It's also extensible, so if we have a structure, another structure out here that we wanted to heat, like a greenhouse or something like that, if we want to run a hot tub, which was a big selling point for Rachel, um, she got really excited when she heard we could run a hot tub off of it, and someday we hope to have a hot tub, and that'll be nice to soak in after a long, hard day of working on the farm. But we'll get all the hot water for that from the boiler instead of having to spend a ton of, ton of money and electricity and coal energy and all that kind of stuff heating water for the hot tub. So anyway, uh, I'll just give you a little tour. I'm about to start it up. We haven't started it up yet uh, this year. It's, the temperatures at night are starting to dip down into the low 30s and even into the 20s. And so it's getting to be about that time where we need heat. And um, so I'm just gonna start it up. Uh, but I thought before starting it up, I'll give you a little tour, show you how it works. So, let me get a flashlight here. All right. So this upper chamber here is where you build a fire and uh, I, I, got, I cleaned this all out in the spring when we were finally done and didn't need the heater anymore for the winter. Um, I cleaned it all out. So you'll see what it looks like clean, quote unquote clean. But I got it about as clean as I could. Um, just uh, basically using a angle grinder with a cut brush to get all the creosote and stuff off. Sweep out the ash, sweep out the clinkers and stuff. But anyway, this is the firebox. And uh, the way this works is there's the big tube in the middle here, and also there are tubes along the left side and on the right side. And those provide air. They're blowers that blow air in and keep the fire going and get it nice and hot. And then if you can see, there's a gap down there below that tube. And so what happens is the fire burns in here, and all the smoke circulates around, and it has nowhere else to go. There's no outlet at the top here. It's just a, just a closed box. I don't know if I can show that very well. But anyway, the smoke and everything gets sucked down through that little gap down there, and it comes down into this area, which is the afterburner. Let me see if I can, there we go. Yeah. So that's where the smoke comes down, and the circular thing there forms a kind of venturi, and more air gets pumped in there, and it burns all of those hot wood gases, and that's what cleans up the emissions so that we don't have a lot of smoke coming out. And it also gets super hot and captures all that heat because there's a big water jacket that goes around all of this. So I can show you. And so then after the hot uh, combusting gases burn down here in the afterburner, they circulate backwards behind that venturi thing. I'll show you what it looks like in the back. So those hot gases come here to the back of the stove and then they start to rise up over these fins. Now inside those fins is water for the water jacket. And so this acts as a heat exchanger. And those hot gases rise up through there 
and you won't be able to see it, but there are gaps at the top of this apparatus. And those gaps lead directly up here into the chimney. You can see in there, hot gases come right up through there. Again, transferring their heat to that, uh, the water jacket. And then they finally escape and they go up the chimney here. And after the thing gets started, uh, it starts to burn nice and hot, then you don't see a lot of smoke and stuff coming out. So one modification I'll mention is that originally uh, there were some sort of uh, undulating uh, thin metal um, sheets that with holes cut out in them that went in between these fins, and they act as additional heat transfer uh, devices. Basically the hot gases transfer their heat to those metal fins and those metal fins because they're touching with these they will you know physically transfer that heat but I found that those things accumulated a lot of uh, you know tar and soot and stuff and really got clogged up they made it really difficult to clean they get wedged in place really tightly they recommend that you pull them out and clean them quite often and I would go to do that but they would be wedged in there so tightly I would bend them all out of shape just trying to get them out of there and I figured whatever advantage I was getting in terms of heat transfer probably wasn't worth the trouble, the difficulty of cleaning. Um, they really just provided a lot of surface area for more accumulation of stuff. And we even had this happen where so much stuff had accumulated in them that the hot air could not transfer very well upwards through this thing. And it was actually getting clogged up so that it, the, it was really restricting the flow out the chimney, reducing the draft of the stove and like massively hampering the performance of the stove. So I just pulled those things out and clean these hand, heat transfer fins, and I just don't use them now. So anyway, that's that's pretty much how it works. The last thing I'll show you here is over, I have this panel off to the side too. So these are where the pumps are. So these pumps circulate the water. The one on the left is the hot water out from the stove. It sends it under the house. There's a like insulated PEX pipe that we put underground here and through the foundation and into underneath the house where it connects to the heat exchanger and the plenum of the air system and the, the little heat exchanger that preheats the water going into the water heater. So it circulates that hot water in there and then it comes back here, the cold there you can see on the right. And there's a little plug in here with a, a kind of just basically like a little power strip. And I, I switched that off when I shut down the stove at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of a, a spring when we didn't need to heat anymore or not in the beginning of spring, more like in April sometime, I think, is when I did it. But anyway, so the first step in the restart of this thing, once you have it all cleaned up and ready to go, is just turn the pump on. So now, water is circulating. The other thing here is, these are the, this is the really fancy bit, these are the controls. Uh, you can see it's flashing connected there. Um, this thing actually connects to our, our home internet, and I can pull up uh, data on my phone or the computer that shows it basically keeps a record of the water temperature in the water jacket and when, and um, the blowers and everything that are stoking the fire and it'll actually send me warnings and stuff when uh, the fire is getting too low and I need to come out and reload the wood and stuff so it's a little bit high tech but it's a good control mechanism and it is nice to be able to look at the graphs on my computer and see how it's performing, see if the performance is declining, which usually means I need to come out and clean it and that sort of thing. Anyway, the way you turn the whole panel on uh, is you hit the power button right here. You see it come on and it kind of initializes and stuff. It starts measuring temperature. That sound that you hear are the blowers kicking on that push air into the firebox and into the secondary combustion chamber. Um, and the temperature there is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what it's measuring the water jacket temperature at right now. And of course, it's showing me alarm that the door is open uh, because, of course, uh, got the door open here. Yeah. All right, so I got the fire started in here. Uh, it's going pretty good so far. I'm gonna let it get kind of settled and uh, maybe feed a little more wood into it, and then I'll close up the door, and we'll see. Uh, Hopefully, um, smoke starts going up the chimney, and at first a, a bit of smoke will be coming out of the chimney, and then after that secondary combustion afterburner gets going, then it should clean up really nicely. Okay, just been going here for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, or just 
not 10 minutes yet. What I wanted to show you is the readout over here. One thing is telling us that the water temperature is 80 Fahrenheit and that 0% right there is an indication that currently the secondary combustion chamber uh, is at 0% combustion efficiency, which is exactly what you would expect to be when you first start it up. Um, the whole apparatus has not heated up yet enough to, to see that secondary combustion really kick in. And of course we can see out the chimney that a lot of smoke is coming out, which is uh, water vapor and stuff from the wood. The wood is pretty well seasoned, but not perfectly seasoned, still has some moisture content. So it's gonna take a bit of burning before it really starts to drive off the moisture from the wood. And then it will do much more in terms of combusting the wood gases. And as those wood gases get combusted in the secondary reaction chamber, well, for one, the emissions from the chimney will clean up a lot and we'll begin to see the readout here climb. So we're already, we gained a degree so far. We're still at 0% in the, uh, in the secondary chamber, but um, the water's slowly starting to heat up. All right. We've been going now for about an hour or so uh, since I first started the burn and we're still seeing some smoke and stuff come through which is expected. It's going to take a while to push all the moisture content out of the wood. Um, uh, when the stove is really humming along and you have a good bed of hot coals inside there, then all you need to do is periodically, maybe every few hours, maybe six, seven, eight hours, something like that, throw in a couple sticks of wood on top of the hot coals and the blowers will kick on and it'll start heating up all that and pushing the moisture out and you'll get a little bit of smoke for a while and then it clears up pretty quick and you just kind of keep things running in a steady state with a good supply of hot coals then of course every week or two you got to shut down and shovel out the ash and stuff like that and, and kind of restart but uh anyway i wanted to check in on the <clears throat> reaction chamber the secondary combustion chamber that is you can look at the display over here and see where we are. All right, so the water temperature now is up to 104 degrees after about an hour burning the fire. So it's gone up a little, maybe 25 degrees. And the reaction chamber now is at 21%, where of course it started at 0%. Um, and in my experience, the increase in the percentage of the efficiency of the reaction chamber is a nonlinear process. So once it gets going, then it really starts to take off. So we'll keep an eye on it over the next 30 minutes or so, or 45 minutes. And we'll see, what we should see is how both that um, the reaction chamber percentage efficiency, as well as the water temperature should start to climb pretty rapidly. And at the same time, we'll see the emissions start to clear up even more. All right, the, you can see the smoke is starting to clear up quite a bit now. We're, we've been going for not quite two hours, I believe. And um, check out the display here. Um, so the reaction chamber, the secondary combustion is at 67% efficiency. And the water temperature is up to 167 uh, Fahrenheit. So um, the system is set up to try to maintain the water temperature, I believe between 165 and 190 Fahrenheit, I believe, or 195 Fahrenheit, uh, perhaps. And so basically the primary and secondary air blowers modulate uh, to try to keep the temperature in that range. Um, and so uh, we're seeing the efficiency creep up a little bit still. And as that efficiency, we're getting close to 70% efficiency. And is that gets up closer to 80%, 90%, then it's actually, I think on the video, it's probably hard to see much coming out there, but there is a little bit of smoke coming out there, but it's quite cleaned up compared to earlier. All right, um, this is a display uh, that I can pull up on my computer or on my phone um, that shows the status of the, of the wood boiler. Um, right now, we're at, we've, the burn has been going now for about 
two hours and 45 minutes or so since I first started the fire. And now the water temperature has finally climbed up to 185.7 Fahrenheit, which is shown on this scale here. The reaction chamber is operating. This is the secondary combustion efficiency operating at about 60% right now. Um, so this is the little dashboard display to get a quick view. There's also a view where you can actually look at the history and look at the data. I apologize, the refresh rate of the camera is not matched the computer, and so it might look kind of weird. But basically, starting around 9 o'clock down here is where uh, we actually started the fire. <clears throat> and, and you can see this red curve is the secondary combustion chamber, the efficiency of that climbing up on the left-hand scale. To it peak, looks like it peaked out at about 77%, and then it actually the it'll automatically dial back the intensity of combustion because of course the water temperature keeps going up and up and up, and it doesn't want to overheat the water. Obviously, it doesn't want to boil the water in the system, so it'll actually begin to dial back the combustion um, and sort of moderate the heating in order to sort of anticipate the inertia of heating of the water. And so now the water is up to almost 190 Fahrenheit, which is the cutoff point. And so now the water's at that temperature, uh, the combustion chamber, it will just shut down and it'll sit there quietly sealed up, saving our hot coals. And over time, over you know several hours, the temperature of the water will drop uh, back down below 160 or 165 Fahrenheit. And when it gets low again, then, then all this combustion will kick back on and start to heat the water back up. Of course, it'll take the, the rate that the water cools is a function of how much heat are you using in the house, how much hot water are you using, and what's the temperature outside. Um, so that rate will, will depend on the local conditions. But anyway, I'll get some uh, video at some point showing several cycles of heating uh, with this where it heats the water and then it cools down and then the reaction chamber kicks on and it heats it up again. And then at some point, you know, after several of those cycles, you got to go out and actually feed more wood into the system. Okay, here we are. We're closing in on about three hours since we first started the furnace up and now the water temperature has climbed up to about 190 degrees and you can, you can hear you, you <laughs> what you can't hear going is you can't hear the blowers going it's no longer forcing air into the primary combustion chamber it's not forcing air into the secondary combustion chamber uh, because it doesn't need to heat the water anymore and it'll just sit here like this until that water temperature starts to drop toward about 160 fahrenheit <laughs> And then it'll kick up combustion again, and it'll reignite the hot coals that are that are in there now. Um, yeah, so that's working well. And if we look up at the chimney, of course, it's not pushing any air into the combustion chamber, and so really nothing is coming out the chimney. 